Hello, my name is Alex Gurli and I am going to present you the DrawtWatch interface that we are developing within the Dry Danube project. DrawtWatch is a web-based application used to display and analyze drought-related datasets that are provided by our project partners. Today, I will explain the components of the DrawtWatch interface and show you how to use it to analyze a drought event. The tool is available at drawtwatch.eu and today I will guide you through its components and explain how to use them. The first thing that we notice when the application loads to our browser is the base map. Base map is used as a canvas to display and overlay the drought related datasets as one would do in the desktop GIS. We can perform the basic map manipulations such as panning and zooming in and out by left clicking and dragging the mouse and rotating the mouse wheel forward and backward. Zooming can be performed also by clicking the plus and minus buttons in the lower right corner of the screen. Mouse cursor coordinates in the WGS84 coordinate system are displayed in lower right corner. Some other base map manipulation options are available in the upper right corner. The first is the option to search places on the map by typing the name of the place of interest and clicking one of the options provided by the geocoder. The second base map is map selection. The Drought Watch has three types of the base maps options predefined and user can select the preferred one by clicking the base map button and choosing one from the menu. The default base map is provided by Google Maps. Second is Stam and Tiles. And the third option is Cloudless Mosaic of Sentinel-2 imagery provided by the EOX company. Below the base map options, four overlays are available, each represents a NUTS level regions, but we will return to the purpose of those later. Within the Drought Watch, you have access to an extensive list of drought related datasets that are divided in two groups static and dynamic. Drought related datasets are accessed through the menu on the left side of the screen. It is divided into two tabs. One for the datasets that come in form of time series, meaning I can display several layers of the same product for different dates. The second tab is dedicated to the products that do not have temporal component and represent certain phenomena as a static map. The menu displays the list of available products with a preview image, name and short description. By clicking on the preview image, we span the product option and legend as well as display the product layer on the map. Note the pale circle in the upper right corner of the each menu row. When you display the product, the button will turn green, indicating the product is displayed. By clicking this green circle, we turn off and hide the product. The products displayed in the interface provide abstracted information related to the drought and user can familiarize with the products by reading the short description. This can be displayed by clicking the small eye icon in the product section of the menu or reading the full fact sheet provided under the document icon. If the product has also info about its symbology and legend, this is displayed by hovering the mouse over the legend. The fact sheet provides the extended information for the dataset interpretation, technical information and production methodology explanation. I mentioned temporal resolution earlier. Some of the products are provided in form of a time series, meaning that we can display the product for certain dates in history. For example, for the SWI product, we have a dataset for each day since 2012, for NDVI product since 1999, but for every 10th day. Therefore, temporal resolution of the SWI is daily and the NWI is decadal. 
purpose of the historical data is to analyze the past drought events due to creeping nature of the drought event development over long periods of time. The list of indicators is open to new products including various types of national datasets. We can access the historical datasets through the calendar. First, we display the selected product and second, we open the calendar by clicking the date display. Right away, we notice that some dates are brighter than others. This means that we have a dataset available for that day and we can display it simply by clicking the day number. To display the next day's product, we click the right arrow and the left arrow to display the previous day's dataset. We return to the last available dataset by clicking the calendar icon. Next, I will show you an example of the development of the route for the year 2018 using some indicators. So, let's check how drought developed in the summer of 2018. I will first turn on the SWI indicator, which is the soil water index anomaly, and go back in time to the 1st of July 2018. I will then increase the opacity of the layer and just go forward in time, day by day, to see how the drought phenomena is developed. Of course, if we check SWI anomaly for every day, we cannot see the uh, very difference because the dataset or the timer resolution of the dataset is too detailed. So we can just skip ahead one week or a few weeks to uh, better see the difference. And now we see that the drought in the central part of the Europe is uh, developed significantly. And if we jumped one week forward, we can see that this brown patch slightly increased its size towards the south. I can also compare different products. So let me just jump to the 21st of July of the same year and then turn on also the NDVI. I will jump on the same day in the past and I can already compare these two indices by just by uh, comparing them by uh, increasing or decreasing the opacity of the upper one. But I can also compare them better by swiping the upper layer and then comparing by moving the map and checking the correlations between the two datasets. These two datasets are derived from the satellite observation data. The first one from the radar satellite and the second one from the optical sensors. Uh, but we are also checking this remote sensing derived data by using the uh, indicators that are provided by the reporting network and assembled by some of our partners. So if I skip backwards in time, also on this drought impact assessment dataset, uh, basically I will just jump using the calendar and I can see that the data sets are closely correlated for the Czech Republic. To see the other countries, I can check the NUTS3 level to see also the other part of the catchment at the different uh, resolution. Now, let's check if the drought persisted throughout the summer and into the autumn. So let's check end of the summer for the SWI dataset. And we can see that the drought already developed in the southeastern part of the Europe. 
we can also see this if we check the 1st of October for the NDVI anomalies. Like this, by changing to full opacity and comparing the datasets again. To validate the data, I will again engage the Drought Impact Assessment. Change to the beginning of autumn and see that the drought still persists in this part. Sometimes it is not enough just to compare the dataset visually. So therefore we prepared some advanced tools to compare the datasets numerically. Uh, first such uh, tool is the identify tool. I can activate it uh, here in the toolbar and just click anywhere on the uh, datasets and the tool in form of this uh, pop-up returns the exact values of the dataset at the clicked position. If there is no data at the click position, uh, also this is notified in the pop-up. Second tool uses the Drought Watch capability to display and analyze time series datasets, and this is time series chart. I don't have to have any datasets turned on because I can simply select the datasets from this menu, select the starting and the ending date for the time series analysis. I will move backwards to the September 2018 and select a location, for example, in Slovenia. Submit the query and wait for the tool to return the chart. Now that the chart is returned, I can also identify the exact values returned by the tool by hovering the chart dots or I can hide the individual series. I can export the chart as a SVG or I can export the data in the comma-separated values format. Uh, this format can be imported, for example, in the Microsoft Excel to produce uh, your own charts. If I want to change the location, for example, from the drought point of view, the central and more central uh, Europe was more interesting. Submit the query again and see that the SWI values here are much more, are much lower. I can see how the precipitation amount affects uh, the SWI index value, but also the NDVI anomaly index. Let's check another location, submit query, and the same can be done for this location. Let's move to the next tool. For the next tool, we have to have engaged a dataset. The dataset has to be turned on for a specific date. We can select one of the NUTS layers levels, select one region, in our case Hungary, and then select the Zonal Statistics tool. This tool uh, okay. If something goes wrong, 
a uh, kind notification is displayed that uh, this tool returned an error. So let's try again. I will disengage, disengage the SWI, Anomalist layer, turn it on again, turn on the nodes layer again, select it, and now the zonal statistics of the SWI anomaly layer for the territory of Hungary is returned. If I want to compare it to another uh, country, I just select it and click the same button again. You can see that the statistics window is then updated. We can do the same for Slovenia. Statistics are updated and, for example, for Bosnia and Herzegovina, statistics are updated again. The last tool in this set is the time series render. We don't need uh, these data sets anymore because they will be displayed automatically. I can zoom a region that it is of my interest select the time series render, select the product that I wish to render and the time frame that I wish to have it rendered in. For example, from the 1st June of 2018 until the 1st August 2018, I submit the query and wait for the tool to return results. Here we have a close-up of the time series and they can be uh, compared successively. Last but not least, I would like to present you our questionnaire. By clicking on the Join Us button, you can become part of our reporting network. Uh, you need to register, fill in questionnaire and continue with your work so we can uh, provide you with the better and updated Drought Impact Assessment layer. This layer is produced by one of our partners from the datasets contributed from the Reporters Network. Reporters Network is being still developed, therefore the data for some countries are more complete than data for the others, as we seen earlier. This dataset is also used to verify the remote sensing datasets by comparing it. We also prepared user manual. It is located in the lower right corner of the screen and you can find all additional information there. It can be accessed in the lower right corner of the screen. It is in the form of a nice web page that can be navigated by scrolling down or by using this menu from chapter to chapter. If you have some additional questions, please do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you for your attention.